Welcome back to Captains of Industry and still with me in studio is Nteto Nyati, Managing Director of Microsoft SA. Nteto, let's get straight back into things because ahead of the break you were talking about uh, your stress levels being relatively low and mm. one way you manage to do that is that you're hooked on genealogy. And that's very interesting. So, so let's, let's look at what's, what's the fascination that comes with uh, embarking on something like that. Yeah, no, uh, as a person, I'm, I'm naturally interested in knowing deeper around anything. It can be, it can be computers, it can be where I come from. Uh, by the way, my father, uh, some, he had a project that he has always wanted to do, a project which kind of maps out where we come from as a family. Unfortunately, he passed on uh, without having uh, completed that project. So I decided to take it upon myself to, to, com to try and drive this project for him. And uh, I was so fascinated immediately. The more I was digging, the more I was finding this puzzle. And just the ability to put together this puzzle is something that continues to fascinate me all the time. You know. So that's uh, some of what you do when you're not managing Microsoft South Africa. To what yeah. extent has your family history and all that you've managed to uncover going down this route had mm -hmm. a bearing on your personality, but more so your ambitions? I think it's got a, a, a huge bearing because what I've found out is that throughout, uh, in fact, up to the 1800s, uh, my family has either been, uh, you know, uh, either teachers or, uh, or, or priests. So basically we have, been, we have been people who were, you know, trying to share knowledge and help people to kind of like enlighten, in, if you can call it that. And when I look at it, um, there is, uh, in terms of what some of the things that I'm doing already and some of my, currently my family are doing, it's still in the same line. We may not be teachers, mm -hmm. but we are still doing some of the things that they used to do, sharing knowledge, helping people to see the light. If we look at your core family, in yeah. fact, I mean, you've come from a very entrepreneurial family, mm -hmm. your dad having established mm -hmm. uh, five schools and leading mm -hmm. uh, education in the Eastern Cape. Your mm -hmm. mom started, as a, uh, started up a business uh, trading store. How much of that entrepreneurial spirit has rubbed off on you? Uh, I won't say because I'm not so much of an entrepreneur, <laughs> but more of as a business person. Uh, I, I, wa I work within businesses. But what I can say, though, is that growing up within uh, the, um, our family business has helped me a lot to better understand customers, the, 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 the importance of service, the importance of hard work, you know, the importance of listening, listening, and the people around you, how to treat those people in a way such that you get the best out of those people. That environment prepared me well for what I'm doing today. Well, one can only assume that it would be hard having an entrepreneurial spirit within an organization <laughs> like Microsoft in the first place with all the bureaucracy that comes with that. Interestingly, we don't necessarily have too much bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> we pride ourselves that we are big, but we are able to be flexible, we are able to be quick. So mm -hmm. let's look at how you, uh, you know, how you stand your ground and achieve mm -hmm. your objectives within an organization like this, you know, without mm -hmm. trampling on too many toes that could well hinder your own progress or your own ambition mm -hmm. for that company. I think the, impo the important thing for, for in any organization really is to have a point of view and a point of view that is underpinned by research, by underpinned by data. You know, once you have that point of view, you believe in that thing, then you start to share it with the people, the people that matter. Some of those people are your people, the people who are working within your organization because they will help you to execute on that. But the others are people that are sponsors within the company, people that you can tap to for resources. So it is really important to understand the dynamics within the organization, how to get things done, mm -hmm. you know, how to get funding behind your thinking. That's very important. Well, talking mm. about points of view, what you're doing uh, mm. now is very different from the plans that your dad had etched out for you, you know, pushing <laughs> you to become a doctor. What's <laughs> your view on pursuing your own dreams and mapping out your own career path? It, that's again for me, it, it, I go back to that point of view. Uh, I had a dad who had a point of view that I needed to be something else, but I had to be very strong. At a much e a earlier stage, very strong, understanding, connecting with who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. And because all of us need to be doing things that are in line with who we are. Because each time you are doing a thing that is in line with who you are, 
it becomes so easy, it becomes so natural. You don't have to be stressed because it can, you, know, you are yourself, you, you are authentic. You know, so that's why I'm encouraging people to really connect with who they are and, and just continue to drive uh, and, and take careers that are in line with the things that they, they enjoy. Well, when it comes down to it, you're recognized as a leader in your field. In fact, as far back as 2004, you were named as one of Yale University's World Fellows on Global Leadership. Mm -hmm. Is that leader quality in your DNA, or do you think it's something that can be and was nurtured? I, I don't necessarily think it's a, it's, an, it's a DNA thing, but it's more, I think it's really about listening to, to yourself uh, and also being attuned to what is going on around you and, and saying, should I be part of the solution mm -hmm. or should I just be a passenger, you know? And it, I mean, with leadership, there's huge amount of responsibility. In fact, it can be so much lonely there, you know? You, so you've got, to do, you've, got to be, you've got to know within yourself that, you know, you're, 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 you're happy to take on this journey. But I don't necessarily think that it is something that was in my DNA. It's the circumstances and some people around me help me to be the person I am. And not yeah. only within the organization itself, no. you've got to look outside of that, uh, that yes. scope, yes. Uh, you know, and that ambit, looking at your support structures. Yes. Uh, who's formed part of your support structure? I think uh, largely it's been my, my, you know, my brothers and sisters, uh, we, have, we are very close with them. They, they guide me, uh, but most important, I think my wife has been the person that I go to, you know, I share with her, she guides me, she coaches me on a number of things. And uh, it's unfortunate because I'm sure she th she's the one who's stressed for me, and I'm the, one, I'm the one who's not stressed going around smiling all the time. I was just going to say, <laughs> what does she think of your stress levels? Does she agree <laughs> that you're not as stressed out a person? I mean, for many CEOs, that balancing act is a very hard one to get right. Yeah. Never mind, uh, you know, perfect, uh, perfect balancing work and home life. Just how much of a challenge is that for you? Uh, it is honestly, it, it can be a problem because the work, work, there's always work. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, if you understand that there will always be work, no matter how much you work, you will always, there will always be something, then you start to change you, the way you do things. So no, maybe there needs to be a time where I stop because they will, I will never be able to finish things. You know? So that's one thing, that, that mindset which says that, right, at 6 o'clock, I go home. That's it. No matter what, I go home. You know, time of my family. So discipline, discipline, discipline is one of the things that helps a lot in terms of managing is work and life balance. Is that something that's easier to mm. get right mm. the higher up the ranks you climb, though? It is not. In fact, it, it, is, it is worse. Uh, the, it is more because, because people, you know, let's say people invite you for dinner, you know, you know that's the only time you have to say uh, no. I don't do dinners. I prefer breakfast. Do you because do golf? Mm, I don't do golf. You know, <laughs> I don't do golf. And everybody is saying, you know, in order for you to be successful, you've got to do golf. So I, I now I go and run around and go and start playing golf. I need to take that time from somewhere. Mm? It's very likely I'm going to take it from my family's time. You know, so that element of discipline is very important. Okay, let's look at who's been your greatest inspiration, though, and what's pushed you to getting to where you are right now, and what you ascribe your success to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I look back and uh, and I look at the things and the people that shaped me the most, I think my mother is is, is the person who who I look to as as a role model. She's somebody who was, you know, really a nothing. But she decided that her circumstances are not going to define her. She is going to create the future that she wanted. And she worked very hard, and, and she had a vision, and she literally transformed and lifted our entire family to a different level, largely because of who she was, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of, uh, you know, th you know, the kind of determination that she had. And to me, that, that's the stuff that we need to have in this country. You know, looking at the challenges that we face, you know, we have to be strong and say, there is something that I can do. We cannot be helpless. So mm -hmm. ultimately, what is, what's the legacy you hope to leave behind? 
that's an interesting one. Uh, when I look at, uh, at uh, both in, in Microsoft and in South Africa, and when I look at Microsoft, I would like to see a Microsoft that is so relevant to South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, it's so connected to the problems of this country and how we can solve those problems. We are way, uh, a well, a long way towards uh, being able to do that. I mean, the, the connections that we currently have with the government, with the, with the number of companies, we believe that we are getting there, you know. Teta, a pleasure chatting to you today. Thanks so much for your time. Of course, uh, Managing Director of Microsoft South Africa's operations, Mteto Nyati. And that's where we leave it for this edition of Captains of Industry. From me, Alicia Sekum. Goodbye.